to some of the good, the bad, and the box score. Starting off with the good, as always, talking about some of the best performances of the week. As a reminder, this is not just the biggest performances of the week, though if you know anything about the Miami game, you know they'll be on there. This is context involved, too. Okay, it's it's not just the highest numbers. It's what do these performances mean relative to their position, the player, those kinds of things. So, of course, got to start off with the Miami Miami offense. Tua today, 23 of 26, 309 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Tyreek Hill, 11 targets, nine catches, 157 yards, and a touchdown. Raheem Mostert, 13 carries, 82 yards, three touchdowns, seven targets, caught all of them for 60 yards, and another touchdown. And the biggest one, probably, Devin Chain showing out his first blow-up game in the NFL, and what a game it was, 18 carries, 203 yards, two touchdowns, four targets, four receptions, 30 yards, another two touchdowns, uh, put up 70 points on the day. They could have put up 72 and hit a record there, but uh, actually chose to kneel at the end of the game instead of kicking a field goal. Miami just could do no wrong this game, especially in the running game with a chain and most are both having just absolutely massive games. Denver just did not show up on defense. Uh, I mean, credit to Miami, absolutely. You know, what they're doing is incredible. The offense that Mike McDaniels has put together is just amazing what he's done scheme-wise and this uh, assembly of players that they've put together, speed at every position and speed to kill. It's just amazing. But you don't put up 70 points without the defense just not showing up at all, uh, which the Denver Broncos surely did not. The take big takeaway here is Raheem or Devin Achain, you know, might be pushing Raheem Mostert from for some of his playing time. Uh Mostert was leading a chain in snaps for most of the game, still led a chain in snaps over the whole game, though it got closer to even as the game went on. But a chain was still mixing on it early in the game. Uh, you know, his first touchdown was the second touchdown in the game. His third touchdown, I believe, was the third touchdown Miami had both of which were before any of Mostert got his. So A-Chain is definitely becoming a part of this offense. My second best performance of this Sunday was Sam Laporta. 11 targets, 8 receptions, 84 yards, and a touchdown for 18.4 half PPR points. A massive game for a tight end, especially for a rookie tight end like Sam Laporta. He now has a 21.4% target share on the season. He is exactly what we want in an elite fantasy tight end option. Getting a high target share, good with the ball in his hands, can make plays happen. Uh, we kind of need both of those things for a fantasy tight end to be reliable, elite tight end, uh, to have the high target share and be good once he gets the ball. Um, some tight ends manage to be elite scoring tight ends on the back of just pure touchdown efficiency, but that's not something we want to rely on or bet on. We want the players that we can bet on getting a high amount of targets and being successful with them like Sam Laporta is doing. Um, I think rest of year, easily a top eight tight end option uh, could be even higher. The only concern that you can have, I think is when Jamison Williams comes back from suspension, does he demand enough targets that Sam Laporta is now the number three option in the offense, which is much different than being the number two option. Uh, unless the targets are just consolidated enough. Uh, but I have trouble believing that will happen because Jameer Gibbs, also on this offense, is going to be commanding playing targets too. So, now, I, I I don't think much of Jamison Williams compared to the average person. So, I don't think Jamison Williams is going to come in and command a bunch of targets. I think he's going to serve a particular role of, of stretching the field. I think he'll do that very well, but I think that's what he's here to do. I think Sam Laporta can maintain a, a large target share for a tight end moving forward. Last best performance of the week is the Chargers passing game. Justin Herbert today, 40 of 47, 405 yards, three touchdowns, no interception. Keenan Allen, 20 targets, 18 receptions, 215 receiving yards. Also threw a 49-yard touchdown pass to Mike Williams, who himself had eight targets, seven receptions, 121 yards and said touchdown before leaving the game with the injury that I mentioned before. Just an amazing passing offense day for the Chargers, which is what we are hoping for with Kellen Moore coming to this 
offense, them being fully healthy this year, just Justin Herbert and his wide receivers uh, dominating like they did today. Uh, what's important here, I think, is that for as much offense as the Chargers put up today and have put up this uh, year, they are not pulling away from teams whatsoever. They keep finding ways to stay in competitive games despite them being able to score at will. And that's actually a good thing for us for fantasy because that means they're going to have to keep pushing at all times. If they can't put opponents away, they're going to have to continue to try and put up offensive numbers, continue to try and score, which means our fantasy options are going to continue to score fantasy points.